Hello folks, welcome back to a, another Mod Your Vape review. Today we will be reviewing the K-Fun Light from angelsigs.com. Um, I recommend you check them out. This is a clone. We're going to go ahead and jump into this and show you the build construction of it, then we will take it apart, show you each little single part, build a coil for it, and vape on it and let you know how it vapes. So when you open the box up, you have a user manual, covers the basic stuff, um, how to wrap a coil, all the parts I think it has some troubleshooting in the back here how to fill e-liquid how to assemble and disassemble the K-Fun light general advice um, just all that good stuff there that uh, you should take a little quick look through there Seen the top of the box, okay fun. Nice sturdy construction on the box. When you remove the little inside boxes, they are too elongated, almost what like a Sony battery would come in. You get two of them. The first one I removed, I can tell was the device itself, the atomizer itself, because it was pretty heavy. So we'll open the first box up and we have a, looks like a bottle with some silica wick here. Nicely packaged. Go ahead and open that up. I'm going to remove this bottle. I'm pretty sure it is a needle tip bottle. I would think so being that you fill this thing from the bottom through a teeny tiny screw hole. Excuse me. We'll go ahead and slide this back in the box, that uh, silica wick. Open it up from the other side. There is another little baggie. Inside the baggie, you have your clear window for the K Fun light. I'm going to use that, so I will pull it out. And I just want to let everybody know that I have already used the K Fun light. For 24 hours after I cleaned it with a toothbrush, no soap. Um, just scrubbed it really good and, and got all the, the machining oil. You could smell there was a machining oil in there. Also inside the uh, package that the little clear window came in is some extra spare parts. You have some rubber gaskets here. You have two screws. I guess those are your terminal screw or your post screws. Then you have your uh, extra fill screw, some little gaskets. I think those are for the drip tip and in, in, inside the uh, K-Fun light. And then you have two coils pre-coiled on some silica wick. Looks to be about 32 gauge canthal there. I'm going to go ahead and make a coil for this one. I won't be using the ones they provided. I will keep them though. So you do get a nice bit of stuff in your first little box there. And second box. You have the K-Fun light here. And you have a little screwdriver set here. I believe one side is Phillips. And the other side would be flat. So there's that. Set that to the side. We will go ahead and unwrap this k on light. And I mentioned earlier, I have ran this already a full tank to see how it works. And if there was any flaws... 
I found none. It was a little tricky to uh, set up, get the wicking right, and mount in the coil. But other than that, I mean, I love the K-Fun. I haven't used a Russian. I'm going to have to say I like the K-Fun light. It's built great. Um, I like the look of it. The design feature is awesome. But um, let's go ahead and take this thing apart, and we'll show you all the little parts. So starting off, you have your 510 drip tip here. We'll take this top piece off. As you can see, it just unthreads. And my chimney wasn't, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the chimney on mine wasn't threaded down inside there all the way. But um, as you can see, top piece here has a nice black rubber gasket. Those are the extra ones that were in the baggie. And this is, I have to say, this is some nicely machined stainless steel here. I mean, heavy duty. Got some weight to it. Go ahead and remove this first stainless steel ring. And the threads on this device are just like the Chi Yu that I got from Angel Sigs. The threads are amazing for a clone. Normally, when you get a clone, the threads are, you know, they're okay. I got a Nemesis clone that uh, the button, a few of the threads stripped out. So I had to wrap just a little small piece of Teflon tape. And um, these threads are, are a lot better quality than my Nemesis. So we'll go ahead and remove this middle section. Now this would be where you replace your clear window, which is what I'm going to do. So I will set this to the side. And you have a, another ring here. Let's see if we can get this apart. There we go. And it's just like the other ring I showed you. Now you have your deck here. And as you can see, the deck is beautifully thought out. I mean, they really took time thinking about the design on this deck. You have your air hole directly in the center. Your two channels come down the side here for wicking. Right there and right there. Those little lines coming out that way. Um, you have your fill screw on the bottom here. And then you have some nice writing down here. Designed in Russia. Made in Germany. With the logo of, I guess, the K-Fun company. So um, let's go ahead and put this camera down a little bit. We will put this thing back together. Or first we will build a coil and then put it back together and vape on it. So now that the camera is down, we will go ahead and loosen up the two terminal screws here. Now, depending on how you want your K-Fun to run, would be how you make your coil. I've already went ahead and pre-made a coil. I just did a seven wrap of 28 gauge canthal around this screwdriver here. As you can see, both of the leads are facing opposite directions and they're underneath of the coil. If you mount it like that with the leads on the top, you're going to run into some problems. All right, now that we have the coil back on the screwdriver, I'm going to go ahead and align the coil over your air hole. And it doesn't matter at this moment if you're touching the deck because you are going to raise your coil back off of the deck when we're all finished. But you want to take each lead to the opposite terminal that was closest, closest to it because I've found if you do wrap just right to the coil, it 
looks like it's going to short out to me eventually with the way one of these coils goes across both sides of the deck. So now we want to tighten down on our first coil lead that come around. And get the excess out of the way. And then we want to take our other coil lead and like I said bring it opposite from us. And tighten down on the last screw here. Straighten up your coil just a bit. And pull it up off of the deck. Not too high. But you do not want it touching that deck or you will have a short. And that won't be pretty. Alright, so now that we have the coil mounted to the deck of our K-Fun here. We're going to go ahead and trim this excess canthal out of the way. I use fingernail clippers, so just get as close as you can to your screw and the uh, last one. So, that's what it looks like all cleaned up. There we go. Nice pretty coil. I'm going to go ahead and pop it on my Vamo, warm it up, squish it together, make it a micro coil, and find out the ohms, and vape it. Let's raise this camera up, and we'll be right back. All right, so I got the Vamo here. Going to take this off of the ohm meter. Normally I would do an ohm reading on that meter, but for some reason, the uh, terminal, the 510 connection on the bottom of this deck of the K-Fun doesn't fully make contact with the ohm meter. And I don't know if it's the ohm meter or if it's the post here. I've tried to adjust this post. When I did loosen it up a little bit, this top side of the deck here, loosened up a little bit so I quickly tighten it back down get an ohm reading we're sitting at about 1.8 let's go ahead and give it some pulses get that thing glowing well, I can feel the heat on my hand from that We'll take these tweezers, let it cool just a tad bit, and squish it together. Hold it. Just tightening up that coil a little bit there. And fire it a few more times. Should glow from the inside out, which is what we have here. And I'm going to just raise it a little bit more off of that deck. Now comes the part of wicking it. So we will we'll turn off the Vamo so I don't get burnt. Got some cotton here. Gonna go ahead and make a cotton wick. Now it took me a few times to get wicking this thing down without it flooding on me or gurgling a lot. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have enough wick to go down inside your chimney and kind of create a little, not seal, but you don't want those channels fully fully opened or it's gonna let fluid down in which will then seep down into your air hole 
and out the side of your device right here in the little hole there. So now that we have our cotton wick twisted up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and feed it through this coil. Set the device down. I know it's not in camera, but let me get it started and I'll show you what I did. Alright, so what I did was I fed that cotton through that coil and I'm just going to go ahead and not too hard give it a little pull through and if you have to twist it as you pull so that it kind of tightens up inside the coil you can always untwist so now that we have our cotton through the coil here what I like to do next alright now that you can see a little better I like to take the chimney here it's a two-piece chimney remove the smokestack and then you have your chimney barrel here together they make one chimney so I like to lift up the cotton like so take a set of scissors like you're doing a haircut here just trim off some of your fluffy almost dropped the uh, little barrel here and I'm just gonna go ahead and slide them both through the chimney so that they are out of my way go ahead and thread this piece down on the base of your kfon now that you have that done you want to take your scissors trim a little bit more off but do not get too close now this is where I said it, it will be kind of a learning process you'll know you'll have to learn how much how little to use so that you don't have flooding issues but what I'm doing here is I'm not packing tightly I'm just pushing the wick down inside this chimney so that it is sitting right over not clogging but right over those juice channels because what happens here is juice comes up in these little channels here underneath your chimney and wicks up and if it's too exposed you will have a little flooding gurgling and it won't be nice so now that I have one side, I'll flip it around to the other. And like I said, I'm not packing it tightly in there. Just good enough so that it's not sitting over top of my coil, not sitting over top of the air hole. Now that that's done, let's see if we can get that to zoom in on that. There we go. As you can see, got the coil in there nice. We're going to go ahead and get some juice here. Kind of prime it up. Give it a fire or two and see if we have any shorts. And as always, got that boosted by my man Corey Vigil. Check him out. Website is uh, Boosted E Juice. Dot com. I'm going to go ahead and give it a few drops down on this cotton. Not enough to flood it. That was four drops there. Going to let it sit for just a second. Prime up in there in that cotton. Turn this Vamo on. And we'll put it down on 11 watts right now. And as you can see, <coughs> as 
she is making some vapor so there is no problems with a short just adding a little bit more juice down in there before I put the K-Fun back together and fill it up for you and it's still at about 1.7 1.6 ohms so we will go ahead and put the K-Fun back together fill it up and we'll vape it and wrap this review up placing the first ring down on the K-Fun next I'm going to grab the clear window and you want to make sure all these pieces you're screwing down are nice and snug so that those rubber gaskets set down in their correct place smoke stack and thread it down on the chimney base so you should look like that at this step next you're going to grab your second ring screw it down onto the window and last time folks I got to this step and I filled it from the top along the side here not down in the hole but I filled it up and that might have been another reason I ran into flooding out of the side hole I heard it's it's kinda of tricky to fill it up from the top so I went ahead and re-wicked it and um, filled it up from the bottom and had no problems but uh, we'll fill it up from the bottom this time too so now that we're at that stage, I'm going to go ahead and grab the top here and place it down center. Now what you want to do, sorry I should have showed you, is that center hole there, there's that little gasket. You want to make sure it goes down over that center chimney post and just give it a little push down so that you can get your first threading. like so and tighten down and there's the K fun together without the drip tip we'll go ahead and remove it off of the VAMO we'll go ahead and remove this fill screw Set that there. We're going to grab this boosted and I'm going to fill this little bottle. It makes it a little easier to put down in the K Fun. So remove the top. Almost out of boosted in this bottle. Got one more bottle hit away. But we'll go with that much though. Just for the review. So now we have the juice in the bottle. Snap the top back on. Turn your K-Fun upside down. Slide the needle down in there. And I don't know if you can see, but there is juice running down the side of the cape on there. All right. Go ahead and replace this fill screw. Snug it down. And flip her over, place the drip tip on, and as you can see, got a good amount of juice in there. I'm going to go ahead and slap it back on the VAMO. Check the ohms again, everything is good. We'll rock it at 13 and a half watts. And 
And as you can see, the vapor is nice and dense. We'll move this camera back up. Forgive me. Um, the flavor on this K-Fun is phenomenal. The flavor just pops out. I like the clear window. The machining on it is beautiful. They just, they did an excellent job whoever cloned this. And this coil is sitting at about 1.6 ohms. And I'm loving it. So there you have it, folks. The K-Fun from angelsigs.com. Check them out. I believe it was $20. Thank you for checking out the video.